Hello friends, this is Pastor Arthur Pulaski with my friends Bob Leon and uh, if you will notice that we are not quite looking straight at the camera that means because there are multiple devices in front of us so sometimes we will be talking to you, sometimes we will be talking to you but be sure of it, we are talking to you. Absolutely. That's a good explanation. Yeah, that's a good explanation. Yeah. <laughs> we have exciting stuff um, today to talk about. Why well, are we talking politics? Uh, why? Because election is in May. End of May, we're going to go to the polls. So we're going to vote for the next government that will either curse us or bless us. And that's really, believe it or not, up to you and me. We are deciding what kind of rulers we're going to have, not just over us, because if this was just about us, maybe it would not be as dangerous. But this is about our children and our grandchildren as well. That's why I believe this election is so, so important. So, Bob, you're a director for our amazing, growing party, the Independence Party of Alberta. We have thousands of members and every day more people are signing up so if you're a member here is a task for the next two weeks okay and um, it's like a school task it's just, it's like going to school and the teacher is telling you to do something come back and we'll grade you okay we're going to grade you and uh, here's the task you go to your neighbors to your families and to your enemies and do everything in your power to sign them up if you get two three people to become members we're going to explode, and that's what we need in the next three months. Absolutely, Art. That's all it takes is uh, people uniting with one another, and we are seeing substantial growth. Um, the outreach from candidates is amazing. There's some great people coming forward to step up and stand up for their friends and neighbors. So, uh, yeah, we're blessed to be part of this and seeing this firsthand uh, on the front lines. Um, it's amazing. It's an amazing time in Alberta politics. People are ready for change. People are... Uh, they're understanding now that we have to take the road less traveled, that uh, voting in the same old, same old has led to today, has led to this betrayal. That's right. And we've got to stop doing that. So they're looking for other solutions and other options. And they're, they're trusting us now for what we're doing because they realize we're just one of them. We're one of their friends and neighbors. And uh, we're not here to build a legacy party. We're here to make change that, uh, as you say, art that will, you know, bring great things for future generations to come. We're not doing this for us. Um, we're doing this for our kids and, and grandkids and, and their and future generations. Too. And by the way, I'm very grateful to my parents because, of course, as you can tell very quickly, I grew up behind the Iron Curtain under the boots of the Soviets. And my parents eventually finally said, you know what, we're tired of this. And they took us to Greece, me and my younger brother, David. And then they took us to Canada in 1995. We emigrated here to this great country. And I'm very grateful to my parents that they decided to, to bring me to a nation, of course, that used to, because we lost that now, they used to stand on, the, on law and order. And, you know, we used to have criminal codes. We used to have... Um, normal judges and normal police officers and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms uh, that starts with the preamble whereas Canada acknowledges the supremacy of God and the right. rule of law mm -hmm. and also our constitution. I'm very grateful that my parents decided to, to come to this nation and now I have three kids of my own and I'm thinking to myself what what kind of a nation are we going to leave behind? Yeah. I mean sooner or later we will be gone and they will continue. Well, my parents did their part and they brought us here to have a better life. Now I, I, I need to do the same thing. I need to stand up and fight for the better life for my children. And if you are watching this and you're excited about our party, the Independence Party of Alberta, and if you would like to run in this upcoming election, which is 100 days from now, yeah. then let us know abindependence.com and send us an email and let us know that you would like to run in this election. Here's what we're looking for. Ideally, it would be awesome to fill every seat in, uh, in the legislature in a writing with people that have tasted the 
terror, the tyranny, the treachery that came from the UCP government, the Liberal government, and the NDP government, the communist government, um, victims. We're going to have teachers that will be running in this election. We have a firefighter that was kicked out from his job. Why? Because he refused experimental injection. We're going to have um, all kinds of people that have been subjected to tyranny. And I would say that they are the best candidates because Absolutely. they know <clears throat> what is at stake. They understand how broken, uh, how broken we are right now. Um, the justice system is an example of how broken it is today. And being, I talked to a constitutional lawyer a few days ago in Grand Prairie. And I, I told him how shocked I was at uh, witnessing in the courtroom. I've never been in a courtroom before. And so to go there and observe your cases, Art, and, and others that are being abused by this, and cruelly abused by this justice system, to see how uh, it needs change. And the people that can change that are the ones that understand it intimately. So, And the education system, uh, the public health system, uh, child family services, I mean, Every day I get into conversations, you get into conversations with people that understand how broken it is, understand what needs to change. So those are the people that need to step forward. And we need to stop trusting lifetime politicians. Yeah, career politicians. Career politicians who are beholden to uh, unelected bureaucrats who bow to them. We need strong people coming forward that, uh, that are willing to do whatever it takes to, to fix this. Because it is broken. We know it's broken, we just need to grab the bull by the horns and fix it, that's it. Imagine a teacher that was kicked out from her or his job um, because well, that individual wanted to teach children history. Not indoctrination, not sexual perversion, but history. Imagine that, mm -hmm. right? Imagine, imagine that for, for a change. Imagine a firefighter that was willing to go to the fire for you and me and uh, wants to change the system lost his or her job because of this tyranny because that's what it is imagine a doctor that lost his license because he wants he wanted to save lives not murder people do no harm I, imagine a politician that was kicked out i mean not many of them because most of them are traitors uh, but there's still some some good people out there we just need to find them and if you are that good person come and join us i mean this is our time to do what's right um yesterday was something interesting yeah that we experienced you want to talk about yeah christine anderson's visit to uh, calgary and it was an interesting day that tell people who christine is so christine anderson is a member of the parliament uh, she's from germany and um she spoke out against uh, trudeau she made a very powerful uh, statement uh, last year and she she uh, retold that statement yesterday and it was really amazing to hear it firsthand, you know, true. Yeah, <laughs> very powerful. powerful. And so people... Should, standing you know, ovation. Oh after. yeah, it was a very loud standing ovation. Yeah. So I had the opportunity to ask her my question and uh, what I asked her was, because she's very passionate about, you know, passionate against this UN agenda that's uh, betraying humanity right now. And um, I asked her if she knew how that agenda came to Canada. And her response was that uh, we know that all politicians across Canada, all uh, political parties are puppets. That's her quote. So it was, it was perfect. And, you know, yeah. you don't have to name any parties, you know. And I all the same. All the same. Brian Peckford said it last summer in Calgary also that all politicians, all political parties across Canada have turned their backs on the people. That's right. And that's where we're at right now. So this, the, the foundation for this betrayal doesn't happen overnight. It takes a couple decades or more to lay that foundation. And then you have a patsy rolling it out. But we need to understand, you know, that all politicians, all parties have brought it here. And then to, to understand how it happened and to understand the solution is to take the road less traveled. Well, in just a few months, Albertans, you, you will have an option. And you know what drives me crazy is that sometimes I'll have people coming to me and they say, you know, this cliche that I've heard all my life in Canada, um, we have to, we must 
it's like implying that there is a gun to your head that you have no choice we must vote for the lesser of two evils and i remember in the political realm i've heard that over and over again every election actually people would say the same thing we must settle for the lesser of two evils because if we don't vote for this evil yeah. even a bigger evil will come and look at this today so i want to say this to you it was not the liberals that put me in metal cages it was not the ndpers that put me in solitary confinement and still keep me on house arrest to this day after 50 days of imprisonment for doing my job for being a pastor for canadians telling them to stand for their god and state given rights but do it peacefully it was the conservative my brothers and my sisters did that to me and they're still doing it today so why would good people and that's my question to anyone everyone that is willing to listen why would you settle for evil is not voting for a lesser of two evils still evil I'm still voting for evil well you know is god okay put it this way when we settle for evil just because we are scared of the bigger evil uh, what are our options people say uh, well if we don't vote for the traitors I call them Nazis, that's what they are. The conservatives, the UCP conservatives with Tyler Shandro, a Nazi with um, Travis Taves, psychopath, with Nixon brothers, with copying, with traitor Casey Madu, and the flip-flopping political pancake, half-baked Daniel Smith. So what is the difference between them and the NDPers? There's no difference. There's no difference. All of the parties are pushing experimental injections. No. All of them locked us like animals, muzzled us like dogs, enslaved us, froze our bank accounts here in Alberta as well. Yeah. Not just in, you know, in um, Ottawa, but, but let's, here. Let's talk about that. How did that come here? Who brought that here? That, you know, the, the, their ability to do that was the Conservatives. Right? This, again, back to this agenda, that was 2013 when Harper brought in the bail-in banking regime. Mr. Harper brought that in. Yeah. And I had a conversation last night with somebody. It was, um, you know, when an individual identifies knowing how this agenda came here, UCP are doing it today, and they still get stuck in this trap of still saying, we, we, but we have to vote for them because we don't want the NDP to win. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's talk about this. So frustrating. Yeah. So frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it doesn't make any sense. My wife always said um, from the very beginning, it was the conservative government that opened the door. So when you have a villain outside, I mean, what is the job of a gatekeeper or a shepherd, politician, officer of the law or a door? Like, what is the purpose for the door is to keep villains or people that are not welcomed at this moment in your home anyway right yeah, yeah. a door mm -hmm. but what happens when you open the door for anyone to come in all evil gangsters rapists murderers just to come in that's what conservative government did in our beloved Canada that's exactly what they did pretending to be our friends but betraying us left and right traitors yeah. and they should be charged with treason for what they have done to us so I say to the people, I see no difference. They're all the same. During our trials, the trials for the four boys, um, preliminary trials, because they even didn't have their time in court yet, no. their bails were denied. And during the trial, um, the preliminary trials, um, proceedings with the three boys charged with mischief and myself, I have not seen even one politician, MLA or MP, to show up. Not even one. What that tells you, my friends, you know what that tells me? That they don't care. They're not for the people anymore. They are just for some people, but not for all the people. And politicians should be servants of all. That's right. Not just the elites, not just the globalists, but for all people. So we're going to have a fascinating campaign. We got 100 days until the election. We're going to fill every seat um, in the riding as a candidate. So if you want to run, let us know. We have to 
keep those people accountable and show the difference between a person like Christine Anderson that boldly, in the face of the whole world, articulated what we were thinking. Yeah. And kudos to her. What a beautiful stateswoman that showed the whole world how a politician should look like yeah. and sound like. Um, so we're going to start um, the campaign soon. We're waiting for Daniel Smith to call an election. And then it will be up to you, up to Albertans. What is going to be? What kind of people are going to represent you? Good people or uh, evil people, just a little bit less poisonous. I remember my brother, and I keep telling the story because um, it shows it beautifully, what we're facing. One day he would come to me, my brother David, and says, uh, Art, how are we going to vote for? You know, because he had the same dilemma I had. Uh, that was a few years ago. And I said, you know, David, I have no idea. They're all evil, all of them. And he says, you're right. They're all poisonous. Just mm -hmm. some of them are a little bit less poisonous. So dealing with scorpions, vipers, and snakes, they all will kill you. Some will kill you a little bit slower, but you're dead. You're good as dead. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with traitors in power? Or perhaps you're like, like us. And you say, enough is enough. I'm not going to do the same mistake. You know, fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. No, fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Right, right. That's how the story goes. Yeah. And they already have fooled us. Yes, they have many times. And I, you know, having the opportunity myself to be involved behind the scenes and to see firsthand of how bad it is and how corrupt it is, uh, it was an easy decision for me to look for a new solution. Uh, and it's it's a it's a tough process for people to go through. I understand you're involved in conservative politics. I was involved in conservative politics. I helped so to have, elect some of those yeah, things. and same here. So so we have the benefit of, of being behind the scenes and seeing that. Yeah. Uh, it is overwhelming for people to comprehend uh, uh, the betrayal at hand. But it is real. It's happening. It's happening all around us. Fifteen minute cities. The land use change bylaws. Digital IDs. Net zero. All of them, net zero. It's here. It's happening. Four and, chickens. Yeah. Or you need a permit. Yeah. And that's the UCP doing it to you guys. The UCP are in power today, working with World Economic Forum organizations. Do you know that there are communities in uh, in our beloved Alberta that uh, under the UCP government they're passed the laws. That you're not you're not allowed to collect uh, rainwater. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> you, uh, know, you know, I'm not joking. Yeah. You know that under the UCP government, in certain communities in Alberta, not in China, not talking about North Korea, <laughs> not talking about Putin, I'm talking about Alberta, Canada. Yeah. That there are communities that you're not allowed to collect rainwater without a permit. Because if you do, there is a law in the books that you can be ticketed. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with, if you wanna have more than four chickens in your farm, on your farm, you need a special permit from some bureaucrat. You know, okay. you know how that sounds like? It sounds like bureaucracy under communism and socialism. Yeah. I grew up in a country like this, where every aspect of your life was controlled by government, everything. How many pigs you can have, how many cows you can have, how many chickens you can have, what you can do with that. Can you eat it? Can you sell it? Every aspect of your life was completely, 100% controlled by the government. So a friend of mine who grew up in Russia, and he was very happy to come to Canada to have freedom. Uh, he loves to hunt and fish. They are having the conversation now, today, about moving back to Russia. To Russia. Yeah, I mean, whoever thought that would have happened? It's, it's absolute yeah. craziness. And then we're talking about splitting the votes. <laughs> we're talking seriously. Are we talking about splitting the votes again? Good people should vote for good candidates. Absolutely. I vowed never again to vote for someone because of fear of someone else. Yeah. I want to vote for a good candidate from now on. I've done my mistakes, and I'm sure you did it as well. But let's not just repeat them again and again and again and then expect different results because that's insanity.
But another thing with what we're trying to build here, um, the local candidates will be beholden to their local communities. There's no party whip. We're, we're not going to be uh, whipping the, the people's representatives in line with the party agenda. You know, that's what happens today. No more of that. The elected representatives from your communities must represent you, not a party agenda. That is what led to today. So enough of that. So a few things. Um, people will ask me and you and others like us, how are we going to do it? Well, it's actually, it's actually very easy to bring checks and balances. You know that? Accountability. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to elect judges, enough of political appointees. We need to elect chief of police. We need to bring accountability in the form of, I call them, constitutional sheriffs. A force that will be watching politicians, if politicians are not breaking the law. They will be watching judges. You know, judges right now, they're pretty much untouchable. Oh, yeah. They can do whatever they want. They can rule whatever they want. They can break the law. They can rule uh, straight from, you know, uh, ruling straight from North Korea. And that's all good. And they're protected. The crime prosecutors can lie in a court yeah, to the judges. No problems. Yeah. Like this pathological liar, professional liar, Stephen Johnston. That is uh, a crime prosecutor for m my case and for the case of the four boys, the political prisoners yeah. that are still in prison and the three guys charged later. That's the same guy. We caught him multiple times on lying to the judges, multiple judges. And somehow that's perfectly okay. Yeah. But you try to lie. If you lied, you would probably be sentenced to prison yeah. for lying to the courts. So we've lost that. What we need is our police force. Because we're dealing with very corrupted federal government that has completely uh, a total disregard to the law and order, Criminal Code of Canada, uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Bill of Rights, Human Rights, and the Constitution, we have to somehow have the force to protect ourselves from the federal overreach. And I want to finish this broadcast with the inquiry. Because if by now, yeah. if by now, you are hoping that there is any level of protection, like any level of protection, I hope now you're not delusional anymore. We've lost that. It's like asking, uh, I remember when they started the inquiry and someone asked me what I think about it, I, I laughed. Um, I laughed not because it's a funny thing. I love that people actually believe that this is a real inquiry. Yeah. It's like asking the Nazis, the SS high officials in 1945 after the end of the World War II, asking them, oh, would you preside Mr. Goering or Goebbels or Heinrich or whatever the wacko at that time was um, at the Nuremberg trials? Okay, or, 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 yeah. sir, can you, <clears throat> can you promise us that from now on you will be a good politician for the German people in 1945. Absurd, right? Like, I mean, you would laugh at the situation. But that's exactly what happened. It was the family of Justin Trudeau Castro that was, you know, presiding over the inquiry. And they were not even allowed um, to cross-examine the politicians for more than a few minutes. That's not how it's done. No. You, you can't do this properly if you don't have enough time to ask the right questions. And they were stalling. I, I don't know if you watched it. They were like talking nonsense, killing the time, you know, all on purpose. Mm -hmm. And then did you see the documents that they asked for? It was all black, blacked yeah, out. Redacted, yeah. Right? Like you, <laughs> you ask for a document relating to the story and it's all black. You can't see a thing. Craziness. So I knew at the very beginning nothing. It's a, sh it's a show trial. That's what it is. I've seen them under communism. So now, why, why, why we are talking about this? Because now, you should be on our side more than ever. We need independence more than ever Better. in our province of Alberta. Yeah. We've lost the protection of the uh, so-called justice system. We've lost the protection of the federal government within this confederation. We've lost the protection from the police, that's why we need to replace them. And we've lost the protection from our own politicians, mm -hmm. which they, right now we know they do not represent us. They rep represent some globalists. 
So let's talk just a few minutes about the inquiry, what you think about it. This Friday, we just received the verdict that yes, the Bansi ha uh, castles were extremely dangerous. Yes, people were feeding each other and they were singing. And I, if you remember, singing was, uh, was the most dangerous thing on earth. If you were singing, I got 15 tickets for having carolers at our Christmas celebration. It was a very dangerous act. People laughing and having a good time with Playing each other. In the streets. Oh, that's, yeah, that's dangerous. because they were doing it with weapons, yeah, shovels. With shovels. Yeah. shovels are extremely dangerous. The federal government needed, desperately needed to invoke martial law. Yeah. When normally you do that during the First World War, where people are actually dying, shot, murdered, the Second World War, right? And then uh, during the time where the politicians were kidnapped and people were murdered and, and there was like a really serious crime going on, but he did it anyway. And that crooked judge said that it was justified. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? No surprise to me at all. You know, yeah, you, like I me, you're not delusional. Like, no, not delusional. And, and, but the, what this does, and uh, it's a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous precedent. It really is. It gives them full power. Do, the, do that anytime they want. I would like to talk about Alberta's own inquiry coming up yeah. and how it's supposed to be impartial. It's very disappointing to see that, uh, and I'm going to say a name because it needs to be said, truth and accountability. Preston Manning yeah. was paid $240,000. $250,000. dollars by this Alberta government to do an inquiry on the same government. Um, I, was, uh, I was very... Happy to see, and I'll say it that way, Brian Peckford calling that out. And it needs to be called out. That is not an independent inquiry no longer. There's an attachment now to that government. So, again. By the way, for your information, that job was offered to me. If you remember, the government, the UCP government came to me before I was um, elected to be the leader of the Independence Party of Alberta. And they offered me that job with the money. And they said, if I will not run for political office, I'll have, I'll become the chair of that inquiry, which of course now Preston Manning got it. So I was offered that. And I'll tell you why I rejected the offer. Because I would effectively become a puppet yeah. of corrupted governments. I am not interested of being their puppet for money. I want to change them. Yeah. I want to dethrone those corrupted people so we can have a true representation at the legislature. Yeah, money is the root of all evil, and I've, I've uh, witnessed it many times the last three years. Some of the individuals that I worked with um, now are, yeah, at the trough, beholden to the politicians. Very disappointing. It's a betrayal unto itself, so... I guess that's all I have, and I don't want to, yeah, I get upset when I start talking about it, because <laughs> we see all these people being abused cruelly yeah. by the government, and then you see the, the people that are betraying them for silver, for a little bit of money. It's a dark time. Yeah. Well, um, within a few days, we're going to come back to you um, live, and we're going to tell you what we're going to run. Um, we finished our polling. Polling came amazing. We did the entire province of Alberta, almost the entire province of Alberta, and um, we will find out where we are going to run, like Bob and me personally, because I'm looking forward to, to that, and then we will let you know. We will need volunteers, we will need door knockers, um, people that are willing to put loan signs. I mean, we want to do a proper campaigns all across this um, province of ours. So we need your help. We cannot do this by ourselves. Right. I mean, as hard as we are pushing and as hard as we are working, this is not one man show. This is not two people show. This is not even one group or one church's show. This uh, requires everyone, all of you. And we need your help. We will need the funds to buy the lawn signs and billboards and advertisements we're hiring an amazing team oh here's another thing that i want you to get excited about because i'm super excited about this we are hiring um, a team that will do a more professional campaign than it was done for donald trump i'll just give you a hint 
won't tell you the details, but I'm super excited. I have some people that are coming. They're spe specifically moving to Alberta to help us with, um, with the campaign. A really professional team of people and uh, it is going to be beautiful. So we can compete with the corrupted communist and socialist uh, NDP witchers um, or warlocks, if you will. They got $8 million they're going to dump on you, to indoctrinate you, to, to brainwash you. Uh, we can compete with the traitors, the UCP conservatives. They got $10 million they're going to dump on you to indoctrinate you, to scare you, to tell you you have to, you got no choice. You have to vote for us or the bigger evil uh, will uh, take over this province. Uh, we don't have that, but I'll tell you what we have. We have the truth and we have God on our side. And I believe that that's good enough. And if you want truth and if you want righteousness and holiness, then I think we have everything that we need. So come and join us and, and let's keep knocking at the doors. Let's uh, keep opening people's eyes and ears. Absolutely. Amen. God bless. Abindependence.com. Have a great day.